I thought I'd begin with the first episode of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Why Not? Anyway, the very first line of the show is... Who gives a toast at her own wedding? The answer? A narcissist. Okay, the rest of this speech isn't particularly narcissistic, outside of stealing the limelight on a day that's already all about her. But even though the clips show she's not explaining everything, she's still being honest about how she feels about it. Actually, let's talk about how narcissists choose their victims for their emotional and psychological abuse, or at least some of the traits they're looking for in their victims. First and foremost, they want someone who is willing to take on the emotions and traits that the narcissist project onto them. These are emotions and traits that the narcissist can't accept about themselves, so they project them onto the people around them. For Mrs. Maisel, she explains in her speech at her wedding just how perfect her life has been and how it's all led up to this moment. I was going to meet a man. A perfect man. So even though Midge is being honest, she's also lying to herself, or at least looking at her memories through a very carefully constructed filter. This means she's more susceptible to being lied to by the narcissist. I heard it described once as the mask of the victim, and I think that's appropriate even if it's not quite the same as the mask narcissists wear. But narcissists live in a fantasy world where they truly believe that they're the center of the entire universe. I'm, what, I'm a genius. I'm incredible. <laughs> they want victims who are naive enough to believe the narcissist is as larger than life as they pretend to be. Anyway, skipping past the rest of the scene. Oh, near him. Oh, I'll stop keeping you in suspense and let you know that the reason I picked this show, outside of it seemed like a good one to practice on, is that I'm fairly certain that Joel Maisel, Mitch's husband, is suffering from NPD. I'll talk about Joel in a minute, but just as an odd factoid, the comedy and music bar they like to frequent is called the Gaslight, oddly enough. Gaslighting is a phrase used among people in the know about NPD that describes one of their many manipulative tactics. Gaslighting is when a narcissistic person tries to convince you you're crazy by lying to you and sometimes making subtle changes changes in your environment when you aren't looking, is to cause you to doubt yourself and, once again, become even easier to manipulate in the future. Or it's just to amuse the narcissist because that's how cold you become without empathy. Anyway, back to the show, Midge gets Joel a better time slot. Like his time slot tonight. No, he loves his time slot. He loves any time slot, but this is just a tiny problem. Our daughter is sick. Earache and 145 is just so late. I Which he compliments the brisket for. Mm -hmm. Where's my kiss? I should be kissing the brisket. This is because one of Narcissus' main tactics is devaluation. Even though it's obviously Midge who got him a better time slot, he has to compliment something else. And you might say, but that's just a minor devaluing compliment. That's not so bad. You're not realizing that's the name of the game when it comes to a person with NPD. This isn't an isolated incident. It's a series of these minor devaluations spread out over a long period of time. Narcissists don't mind playing the long game. If they can manipulate you slowly into submission, that only makes it harder for you to get out from under them in the end. After this, Joel does a bit of his stand-up, except it's actually Bob Newhart's stand-up. So, many of you may have read the book The Hidden Persuaders. Many of you may have read The Hidden Persuaders. It's about advertising. Well, what if during the Civil War, there was no Lincoln? We're as far advanced during the Civil War as it is today, and there was no Lincoln. And that's another thing about narcissists. They steal things and claim it was theirs to begin with. Something that I suspect Joel has been doing the entire time because the stuff he doesn't steal from actual comedians, he seems to get directly from his wife. The next person who I think has a personality disorder is Mrs. Maisel's mom, Rose. She's incredibly devaluing of everyone around her. In her first line, she's worried about how ugly she thinks the baby is. It's getting bigger. The whole face will be out of proportion. No, but look at the nose. Yeah. It's elongating now. The see? nose is not the problem. The nose you can fix but this gigantic forehead. Wow, Narcissists are incredibly superficial, basically because they don't have the ability to introspect. The superficial is really all they know. Her next conversation topic is to devalue Joe's comedy, even though she's never seen it. He's funny and he likes to do his comedy. But how long are you going to be doing this, running around at night, taking money from strangers like a schnorrer? As long as it's fun. Then she quickly changes topics when Midge is slightly standing up for herself. Something narcissists can't stand is the fact that you're different from them in any way, because if you're different from them, then you aren't perfect, and if you aren't perfect, then you are worthless. This is due to something called splitting. This is when a narcissist splits everything into two categories. Either something is perfect or something is worthless, and that's all they can do. There is no in-between. They know they are perfect, and therefore the things and people they like belong in this category of perfection. To one of those people do something they don't like, then they go straight into the worthless category. Oh, and when Rose switches topics, it's to devalue Midge directly. 
Six to nine more months left on those arms. Really? I've been doing those exercises with the soup cans. Oh, no, forget the cans. Buy a bolero. In this scene, she doesn't say something that isn't a devaluation of someone else, actually. The truth comes out about Joel stealing Bob Newhart's act. Bob Newhart is doing your act. What? Bob Newhart. He's on Ed Sullivan. He's doing your act. Not even mildly bemused. It's his act. What? And when Midge confronts him about it, he says, Everybody in comedy steals everything. Every borrows everybody else's jokes, especially at the beginning. Bob Newhart probably used Henny Youngman's stuff when he started. Which is projection. And yes, narcissists project themselves onto everyone in the entire world. They see everyone else as essentially the same as themselves. Everyone is just an extension of themselves, much like a two-year-old can't see themselves as a separate entity that's different from mommy and daddy. Narcissists are just like that with everybody. They rationalize their behavior by saying, well, anything they have to say, but the everyone is doing it excuse is one of their favorites. Before moving on, I thought I'd mention something else about narcissistic entitlement. Basically, they think they're entitled to, well, everything. But that includes things that are crazy to feel like you're entitled to. Things like talents that some people ha just have naturally, or skills that others spend years perfecting. Here I'm referring to Joel and his comedy, which he seems to think he should have all the skills and talent without putting in any of the work. He steals his act and lacks any onstage charisma, but still expects to be world famous without working towards it in any way. In the next scene, Joel works straight through lunch again. I had to work straight through lunch so I couldn't get downtown to get a time for tonight. Tonight, you understand? Tonight, yes, I understand. Archie and Imogene are coming. Which I kind of think is his way of saying he spent his lunch break banging his secretary, but it isn't clear about that. That's just a thought I had. He's exceptionally worried about his time slot since his friends will be there. But what he's doing is stacking the deck, essentially by putting all the responsibility on Midge. This way, if and when things go wrong, Joel already has a scapegoat in place to put all his shame onto. Again, narcissists can't allow themselves to feel ashamed about anything. They have to project their shame onto somebody, and having that somebody already in place is a very common tactic when narcissists are worried about feeling ashamed during a future event. But even when it comes on suddenly, they'll always find someone else to blame for it. You'll also notice just how frustrated Joel is in this scene with the idea of performing in front of one of his friends. A lot more upset than a normal person might be under the same circumstances. Then again, I feel most people probably wouldn't just steal their act and not work on their stage presence before doing stand-up, but I'm also not a comedian, as you may have noticed. Anyway, Joel whines about everything. Bombs on stage. Head them on. He's very avant-garde. And then blames Midge for it all, like I already told you he would. Something else of note is that he seems to blame her for getting a worse time slot than he normally does. When the hell am I going on? I don't know, soon. You'll notice that all of these things are, in fact, Joel's fault. So then Joel leaves his wife for good. And there are a few things to unpack in this scene. Outside of Midge's suitcase, I mean. That's my suitcase. It is? You gonna leave me with my suitcase? First, this is how it works when narcissists feel intense shame. Well, I say feel, but shame is the worst possible emotion for them to feel, and they have to project it onto someone else. If you wanted to be a comedian, you should have at least written a joke. I tried! With the Ted thing! I wrote the Ted thing. And it bombed! Because you killed it! Then, when all that shame of failing is projected onto her, all he has to do is leave her, and at the same time, he leaves all his shame behind with her in the same breath. I mean, that isn't the way the world works, but without the ability to introspect, narcissists don't really think about the consequences of their actions too much before just doing stuff. One of the other things I wanted to mention is th this throwaway line. We're in Temple, and the rabbi tells that stupid Sodom and Gomorrah joke, and suddenly the whole synagogue goes nuts. So? He got more laughs in five minutes than I did in five months. You're jealous of the rabbi? Which is to say that narcissists are jealous of everyone. If you have a talent, they're jealous. If you say something clever, they're jealous. If you do anything that shows you can, unlike them, feel a full spectrum of emotions, they're jealous. And what do they do with that jealousy? They blame you for it. They tell themselves you're only being skilled at something to make them look bad. And that makes you the bad person in their minds. And they will do anything they can to stop you. Or if they can't stop you, they'll try to make it seem like whatever you're doing is the worst possible thing anyone can do. If they can convince you of that, then you're the one to shame. And they have won. Oh, they're also obsessed with winning and see absolutely everything as a competition, by the way. Another thing about this scene is at one point Midge tries to fix things by taking all the blame for all of it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Me too. I will be better. 
I will do better. I, I'll, I'll pay more attention. You, you can quit your job. We, we can go to the club every single night and I'll buy more notebooks. I've been we... having an affair. Again, this is why she's good supply for a narcissist. She's willing to take on what the narcissists in her life are projecting onto her. She's probably trained, essentially, to be this way by her narcissistic mother and possibly her father, too. In the next scene, Mitch tells her parents that Joel left and her mother and father immediately starts blaming her. Why? What did you do? Nothing. I, I didn't do anything. He's, he's in love with his secretary. How can you say that about Joel? You liked him. I knew what he was. Why didn't you tell me that? I huh? did tell Wait. you. When you first came home with him that night, I looked at you. I asked, is this the choice? And you said yes. That was telling me? I have to spell it out for you. There's something called blame shifting, just so you know. Another tactic of narcissists, since they can't accept blame for anything. But in this case, since Midge is probably her parents' lifelong scapegoat, if anything goes wrong within the family, it's Midge's fault. Okay, this might also have something to do with the setting being in the 1950s, where divorced women were basically shunned as if they had leprosy or something. The divorcees. Do not forget, we do this so we can eat cheesecake. They do this because they need to find new men, or at least look true for the coroner after they die alone. Which is also an inherently narcissistic thing that was just, you know spread throughout all of society at the time. Anyway, there's about 20 minutes left in this episode, but there's nothing more for me to say about the episode, so I'll just leave it there. 